another blessing. Somebody's got one I know. Oh, my God. We didn't tap out. Okay, Ms. Robin. Amy. All right, page 146. 146. This world is not my home. P of G. One forty six. I said, God, 
If there's anything left that you can do and use my life for, I said, please, That's use my life. life. <laughs> Thank and, God. Uh, I, believe. I believe that most people will find out but that after me and Buddy have our conversations and everything, of what God did, there was a six-page journal that was kept over the two weeks that I was in that hospital, and there was testimony upon testimony upon testimony of what God did while I was in that hospital. And oh, by the way, the ending of it, it was unbelievable because it just so happens that Miss Tate, the one that had the daughter that we've been praying for for over five years that the hospice was called in, and then she goes brain dead and all, she was four doors down from me in the ICU. And Hedges Baptist Church, David Sears and me standing in the middle of the hallway, they stopped the bed, they stopped everything because I told them, they didn't tell me to stop praying. I stopped, I, I did exactly what God wanted me to do. And me and David Sears stood in that, Pastor David Sears sat in that hallway. And I know that there was a lot of people that may not know Jesus, but they saw Jesus that day. And it wasn't because of me, and it wasn't because of him. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know what God had in that whole thing, but I know God had his hand in that whole ordeal that was going around. So I, I just wanted to speak up. I wanted to praise God. I wanted to make sure that I was here tonight to hear my brother John bring this message. Because I believe that he's the strength that got me to where I am right now. Amen. 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 All right. Anything else? Before we do our final song. All right, page 155. Victory in Jesus. That's what we're praying for for all y'all. Victory in Jesus. P of G.
we have a special tonight by Miss Brenda. If y'all would, be in prayer with me. Brother John. John, come on, brother. Tell you your pulpit. Amen. He's on. Yeah, I'm appreciate it, brother. How's everybody doing this evening? It's good to be in the Lord's house on a Wednesday evening. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a way to spend the evening. for tonight. Amen? Being in the house. I want to also welcome people online. We got people that are watching online 
here locally, out of state, out of city. Give them applause, too, for joining us tonight in our service. Tonight is going to be a very basic, a very straightforward message that was given to me by God. And at first it kind of threw me off because I wasn't sure where he was going with it. But you know what? Sometimes it's not for us to question. It's just to be obedient. Amen? Amen. And that's my job. If I do my job tonight and be obedient, share the gospel with you, everything else is going to be just fine. Amen? Amen. Oh, we're going to start off in the book of Matthew. If you got your Bible, please turn over to Matthew chapter 5. And while you're getting that, let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get started. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful evening you've given us in song service already. Lord, you've heard the praises already being mentioned and how you're working in people's lives. Lord, just step me aside and fill your words, your Holy Spirit, that your message comes across from you to your people through me, Lord. And just give us the food and nourishment that we need to hear from you this evening. We ask this only in your name, Lord. And all God's people said? Amen. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. And all God's people said? Amen. Hey, here we go. You got your place in your Bible? Amen. All right, starting in chapter 5 and verse 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. We have a job to do here. We're not just to sit around and twiddle our thumbs and wait till we go home. This isn't our home. We're passing through. Guess what? While we're here, we need to shed some light. The devil is doing his part because he knows his time's limited. The time is coming for him to where he can't do no more. We as believers need to be doing our part in sharing the gospel. We need to be the light that shines in this world. So that's easy to say in our parts. We read it. It's a simple passage that's been taught. But what does that look in a believer's life? How does that really look to someone? If you go over to the next chapter, or excuse me, the next book, Mark chapter 2, another very familiar passage we're going to look at and see what that looks like in our lives. Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1. When you get there, let me hear you. Amen. 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 Says, and again, he, talking about Jesus, entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was, what's that noise that he was in the house? We're in the house tonight. We better be making some noise for our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. The community around us should be going, what's going on on a Wednesday night down there at that Laney Road Baptist Church? Why are they being so loud? Don't they know I got to be at work the next day? We need to be making some noise for the Lord. Amen? Amen. We got a lot to shout about. There's no reason for us to not be loud at the right times. Verse 2 goes on to say, And straightway many were gathered together, 
insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. How many remember being in our youth church back in the day? Amen. A lot smaller than this. A lot of elbow to elbow. And boy, when we moved into the mansion here, we thought, woo-wee! <laughs> we don't have to worry about if we never had the bath night before or not. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got some room. We got room to fill the seats to bring more in. Yes. Verse 2 talks about there were so many gathered that there was no room. We've been there. We've seen that. We used to be in that church. God blessed us with a new sanctuary. It's time to fill the house. Last part of that verse says, and he preached the word. When I read that, I asked God, I said, we preached the word here. I said, how many have been here as my witness since last Wednesday? Wednesday, Sunday night, or Sunday morning, Sunday night, and been to all three services. Okay, good deal, good deal. Because if you remember that, going back a week ago, Pastor Buddy preached on Moses complaining to God when they were out in the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Amen. God told him that it wasn't his job to complain about that. He was in control of that. They were complaining because they were having to eat manna out in the wilderness. And God says, I'll give you enough meat that you'll eat for a month and you'll be tired of eating some quail. We find reason to complain about a lot of things that we don't need to be complaining about because it's not our problem. It's God's dealing with that. God's providing everything. We just need to be obedient to what he needs us to do, and he takes care of the rest. Amen. Sunday morning, my brother Wade preached on hope through the darkness. There is a lot of dark times going on in our lives today. Things are going on. As we know, this is not our stopping place. This is not our home. Amen. We got a home, a mansion, as Jesus says, God says, waiting on us in heaven. Yes, we, do. we have that hope, but we can also have that hope now. Because even though things may not be going our way, some of the times, as even I've heard my brother Frank say, my faith is tested harder in the times of problems than it is when it's going easy. We, we get our strength more so when we're tested. And then we had Brother Dan speaking on the Bible is the book. It's our Chilton manual. It's our playbook. It's our instructions in life. It's everything we need to get through. When, when things aren't going your way or when you can't find the peace, the love, the joy, go back to the playbook. Go back to the book. The world will try and tell you all kinds of crazy things. They'll try to find love and money. They'll try to find love on this, that, and everything else. They don't have the playbook. They don't have the right instruction manuals. I think Dan used the reference of H7 part. It goes to where? In the instruction manual we have are the clear children's manual H7 might be God's peace and we know exactly where to get that and where it belongs yeah. 
So the word is being preached in this church. And we need to share that with others. Going on into verse 3. It says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto them for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and then they had broke the roof open. They had laid him down the bed wherein the sick was of palsy laid. You know, it's amazing. We need to be creative. This world is sick, needs a savior. The beautifulest thing God reminded me was we have online. We ain't even got to bring them to the church house. They can go online. Everybody has internet. Everybody has a device and a family. They can watch Wednesday night service from their comfort of their own recliner. Amen. We got to be creative on how we're reaching and getting the gospel out. And it goes on to say in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Isn't that so true? I'm a walking testimony myself as far as dealing with terminal cancer. Doctors and people were saying, oh, you got terminal cancer that's going to spread through your body. You might live six months to a year. <laughs> Five years plus going on. God ain't called me home yet. Come on. I'm not going before the Lord takes me. Amen. And you know, when that day happens, that's okay. This old outer body is ready to go. The inner soul knows where it's going and on fire ready to go when it happens. We know the one that can heal the sick. People are dying and going to hell and don't even know it. That's right. You don't think this world's crazy? Look how crazy it's going with the elections and Black Lives Matter and they're riding over all kinds of crazy stuff nowadays. Everybody thinks they got the rights. It's a sick world we're living in. But there's only one answer, and we know exactly what that answer is. Jesus Christ saves. And it's not just to certain people. He died for all. All. He gave his life for everyone to have opportunity to be saved. We know who can save them. Pressing on. <laughs> this next part's interesting. And verse 6 says, But there were certain of scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doeth this man thus speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God only? There's always party poopers and naysayers, I say. <laughs> Somebody out there is going to say, oh, I just don't believe that. That person got lucky that the car didn't kill him in the accident or whatever the case may be. You know, there's always going to be a group that's going to try to throw up red flag. That's just the devil. The devil's got to try and stop. But you know what? It's funny how God... Jesus replied to him. Verse 8 said, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within them, within him, themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? 
where it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sin. Thus say it to the sick of the palsy, I say unto, the, unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. Isn't that so true in our lives today? The naysayers want to say that, and Jesus says, I... They'll try to tell you all kinds of things, but when you experience it personally, when you know without a shadow of a doubt, yes, I don't care what anybody try and tell you otherwise. That's right, Amen. My Lord and Savior did that. Amen. Amen. They tried to put him in the tomb, didn't they? <laughs> Jesus told them before they even did that, you got three days and watch it out. <laughs> they couldn't find him in the tomb anymore, could they? <laughs> Jesus wants to heal. All he's got to do is say the word and there you'll be healed. I know this church personally has seen many a testimonies of that. Given testimony to that. We hear it all too often where Jesus has done one thing or another and people be like, I just don't, I can't believe it. I, I, it can't be explained. That's the Lord. Verse 12 is my favorite verse in that. And immediately he arose, took up his, the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. I don't know about you, but I know for myself, I've experienced that. And boy, that's a feeling right there. Knowing that the Lord himself done something personal for you. And I don't care how many people shake their head at you and scratch their head trying to figure it out. And they ask you, how is that possible? Ain't but one answer. Our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing but our Lord and Savior did that. When we live and share our testimonies, our experiences in life, it's going to raise some eyebrows. It's going to bring some questioning to people. I promise you, somewhere, some way, somehow, along the way, somebody's going to ask. How did you survive all that? How did you pull through all that? How did you handle all that? Where does your peace come from? Where does your joy come from? How can you love that person for what they did to you? Because Jesus did it for us. And when Jesus pours his grace and mercy out on you, Ooh, what a feeling. Feel it, brother. That's the Lord. Oh, what a feeling. You can't feel any better than that. You can be going on your worst day, the worst things happening to you, and God just touch you. That's the Lord. Oh, it turn your day right around. Amen. It'll turn your day right around. I told you it's going to be a straightforward, simple message. Straight from God. I wasn't going to add to it. I wasn't going to take from it. I was just going to preach what he gave me. As it starts 
in our first three verses. Wade, you got something, don't you? It's that time. <laughs> I got something for each of you. Because as my title of the message is, how will you serve him? How are you going to allow your light to shine for others to see? Now, some of you, I'm not saying in here, but some people, that may not make a lot of sense because they don't have the light. They don't have that relationship. But they can have it tonight. If, if they want to be part of the light, they can have that. And just by a simple prayer, confessing to God, turning from their ways, and then they too can be part of the light. Now, some might have had the light and put it under a bush for a while. Wasn't shining like they should. You too can fix that tonight. Come down to the altars or pray where you're at. Get it right with God. And he'll send you a blaze. And I promise you, if you're obedient, he'll put you to work. He'll, he'll make things happen. And some of you might be a flickering light and haven't been 100% on board per se or might have got burned down a little bit. I hope to rekindle your candle tonight. Bible talks about we're here only for a vapor. As Brother TJ indicated, as long as I'm here, I've got a job to do. until he calls me home. And as long as I've got something to do, whether I understand it fully or not, but if I'm obedient, he'll provide everything else. He'll, he'll let you know exactly where he can use you. I, uh, Got you some lights here tonight. If we were to dim the lights, you could see them shine up a little bit. If you snap them and shake them, they'll go to glowing. My illustration is we can light up a dark world and actually even be a little bit colorful tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes back to how will you let your light shine? If Mike, if you got a song of invitation, that's fine. If not, we can just close out in prayer. Oh, you got the lights? That'll work. Hey, there we are. No, that's fine, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you saying yes or no? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Maybe we'll sing that tonight. Do you got this little light of mine? Everybody should know that song. Mike, you want to lead them in that? Shine. Let it shine. Amen. They're going to sing it regardless. <laughs> we just thinking of our nursing home residents. That's it. It is one of their favorite songs. And and, and they'll make up their own words, and it's the, it's the most beautiful thing, isn't it? Amen. 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 Amen
to hear Max and and them just all lifting up their voice and yeah. you know there is no wrong, there's no way, there's no wrong way. That's right. If you're lifting it up to God and you're praising, I'm telling. You, Amen. That, that's that, that's what you like. You know? Amen. God is good. And all the time, let's make some noise for him. Amen. 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 Was there any announcements? Okay. Read your bulletin. Yep. Check your bulletin. Sunday morning, of course. Uh, the yard sale's coming up, I thought I saw. We have a community yard sale coming up on the 7th. Okay, community. Got it? Hi. Right. Plenty of spots left. Bring your spots. That'll work. Good deal, good deal. Uh, Brother Buddy, would you close us out in prayer tonight? Do you mind, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our worship service. It is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his Lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904-924-8240, or you can email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, at L-R-B-C-J-A-X dot org. Until next time, may God be richly blessing you.